Alright, today we are going to be talking about mining and doing our mining cookie activity. So the basic materials that you're going to need for this activity are chocolate chip cookies, you're going to need toothpicks, uh, some spoons and forks, paper plates, and then depending on the age of the students that you're working with, one of our various worksheets that will be divided out for kindergarten through second graders, third through about fifth graders, and then older students based on math and abilities, some sprinkles, and frosting. So basic prep for this activity, you're going to want one cookie per student or you can pair them up. You're going to want to get those cookies frosted with green sprinkles on top, and you'll need Toothpicks, uh, students will be purchasing their own, so you probably need up to five per group or per student, and then roughly two to three forks or spoons per student as well, depending, again, on how much they want to buy. So to get this activity started, we typically get kids thinking just about rocks and minerals to start with, so asking them, you know, have you ever seen a rock, which obviously they all have, and then asking them if they've ever seen a mineral, which some of them tend to think that they haven't, so getting them thinking about types of rocks, types of minerals, maybe have them start naming some minerals, so gold, silver, copper, things that they might commonly think about. And then getting them thinking about the fact that rocks are actually made of minerals. So if they've seen a rock with a white band in it, that's one type of mineral, or rocks with different spots, those are all different types of minerals, since rocks are actually made out of minerals. For example, gold is a mineral because it's one pure substance. But granite is a rock because it's made up of two or more minerals. So feldspar, mica, and quartz make up granite. Gold is a mineral. It's a pure substance. Once we get students thinking about rocks and minerals, we start talking about what we use minerals for. So we get students brainstorming ideas like money, jewelry, building materials, electronics, all the different things that are around them in our daily lives that actually are made from minerals. Once they realize that we use minerals throughout our daily lives, then we start asking them questions about where we get minerals and what that's called to get them thinking about mining and the process of mining. Once we have covered where minerals come from and mining, we get them together in their groups to talk about what they would need if they were going to start their own brand new mining company. So the main things that they're going to need to start their company, obviously first, a company name. Then they're going to need a lot of money, so we can talk about where they can get money from, investors, borrowing from the bank, that sort of thing. Then we talk about land. Obviously they need land to mine on. So with their land, they can either mine half of their cookie or their whole cookie. Obviously it costs more if they want their whole cookie, but it increases their chances of finding more minerals. Then they have to pay employees, so the bigger the project, the more they have to pay their employees, so they will write that here. Then they need equipment, so their equipment options are toothpicks, spoons, and forks. These are their costs per item, so they'll have to do a little bit of math here to figure out if they wanted two toothpicks, it would cost them $50. So they'll figure all that out, decide how much they want. We always let them buy more later. Sometimes they'll just buy two toothpicks and get in there and realize they need more. And then the last thing they need before they can start mining is a reclamation bond. This is a real thing that real mining companies have to do to ensure that they're putting the land back together when they're done. We really want to drive home the fact that uh, mining companies cannot just go out and go mining and dig holes in the land and then leave once they get their gold. They actually have to put the land back. And this is basically an insurance policy, making sure they do a good job. So once the students get in and get mining, they, they're going to have to remove the frosting and the sprinkles, dig out their chocolate chips, and then they actually have to put their cookie back together and try to get that frosting and those sprinkles back on top. If they do a good job, they get this $500 back. If they do a bad job, then the bank would keep that money and be able to pay somebody to go out and do a better job. Then what they would do is they would add up all of these costs to get their total cost of how much money they need to borrow. And then we talk about permits. So in order to keep them and their environment safe, the two most important things for mining companies, uh, if they use their hands or get frosting on their hands or in their hair or in their mouth, it's a thousand dollar fine every single time. And then we'll typically also tell them that they need to protect the land around their mining company. So their sprinkles, their frosting, their cookie, their chocolate chips, everything needs to stay on their plate. 
and it's a thousand dollar fine if they disturb the environment around them, aka the table or the classroom. Once they've totaled all their amount and um, are have agreed to this these rules, then you as the regulator can sign off before they're allowed to get their cookie and begin their mining project. Like I mentioned before, all these activities are adaptable by age group. So this is for our younger students. If you just want them to get the basic idea that the cookie is the land, the chocolate chips is the gold, the uh, toothpicks, pins, and forks are the equipment, the frosting and sprinkles are the land and the dirt, and the permit is the permission to get started. You can do a basic matching activity and then just have them count how many chocolate chips and draw a picture of what their cookie looks like, getting the idea of reclamation back together. Uh, with much older students who can do more math, the costs are higher, um, however there's also a taxes component here to look at gross income and net income as a part of their profit analysis. Once all of their costs are totaled and they can get their cookie, you can let the students start mining. The sort of best way that we've found is to have the students scrape off the frosting and try to stockpile it for later for their reclamation but you'll see all kinds of different variations of what this looks like. And then their goal is to get in there and try to break up the chocolate chips. Each chocolate chip, once they get it out, as a whole chocolate chip is worth $200. So they can start counting how many they found. Uh, the biggest thing that we see is a kid trying to get tiny little pieces of chocolate and counting it, so we tend to let them sort of smush pieces together to make each one count as $200. But basically once they would do this, they would get how many they think they want out. Then they would try to reclaim the land here. I would say that's a pretty good job. So they would count how many they found. So three chocolate chips, each one's $200. They'd figure out their income, take their income, subtract out their costs. And then if they had done well with their reclamation, they get that $500 back for their total profit. So that's our mining cookie activity. It's a great way to get kids thinking about rocks and minerals, what we use them for, how we get them, and the importance of health and safety of workers and the environment, as well as reclamation and doing some math, which they kind of don't even realize they're doing because they're making a profit.